We'll start off today with a very light background. I want just the tiniest little bit of a background, not much. And what I need to do is uh, mist my canvas. Yeah, especially up here at the top. That will help my paint to flow and I won't have such a hard time with it. That's good, I don't need much. Like I said, you know, I think too much would, uh, would be distracting. I want some of that soft haziness in the background. That's about it right there. That's about it. Very simple. <laughs> if you want to do your own version of this one, share it with me. And if I see it in time, I will definitely get it in the next video because it's always fun to see what's going on. That wasn't much. Acrylics dry just a tiny bit darker, so I expect that to dry a little darker, but it won't dry a lot darker, will it? So now I'm going to work on some trees, and these trees are going to be very faint, and very light, with a lot of blue. I've been squirting water, of course, on my palette that keeps it wet. All right, let's uh, let's take a look. See how I mash my brush in? Okay. Let's just let's just see. Oh, that's too dark. See, when you do something that you don't like, it's important to stop and uh, and make a change because it's not going to get better. It really isn't. So stop and make a change. Oh, that's better. See that? What did I do? I lightened it up. You can see I've done a basic sketch. And uh, I'll be honest, I don't like painting bridges. I'm, <laughs> I don't practice enough with them so that I'm, I'm really not as good as I should be, or at least not as confident as I should be. So it took me a couple tries just to get that basic shape. And you'll notice that I've got bushes on either side. And it's just not my strong thing, but that's okay. It doesn't stop me from wanting to do one and doesn't stop me from doing one. You can easily do things that are not your strong point. Just, just pay attention, focus a little more. That's how you overcome it. Just pay attention to what you're doing. It'll all work out. Now I'm gonna press my brush into the paint. This is just a nice highlight color. See that? And I flare it out. Now that's, that's actually very important. I'm gonna come up and, and highlight now my little trees. This is acrylic water-based. I don't have any trouble getting my fingers in there and blending. It'll, it'll rinse right off, no big deal. So that just helps to soften that edge. I, I think that this highlight really adds something to the painting. Yeah, that, that'll probably work. And you come outside of your highlight, or outside of your dark with your highlight, and you get those like loose, airy leaves on the edges. I think that's really, really neat. And then moving forward, you basically just do, keep doing the same thing, darken it up a little so it's not quite so bright, maybe. If you'd expect to see just a little more shadow in this area. And this is not a dark painting by any means, so you don't have to go too far with the holding back on the highlight. You can pretty well just go for it. Now I'm going to work in some trees up here. This is not the darkest green that I could do. I could go darker. I'm not going to do that just yet. Save my darkest greens for maybe like this tree over here and some of the foreground things. Good. Just tap this in. Again, just breaking the br bristles, huh? the bristles of the brush open. Oh, there's a lot of white. There's some red. What am I doing that for? That's weird. <laughs> well, by doing that, see, I'm sprinkling different colors in and around. That helps me to get a little bit more interest going in this painting. It's good. And then, you know, you can go over this more times and that'll make your leaves smaller because you're closing in the gaps. Of course, you don't want to close in all the gaps, but that's pretty good. I like that shape. It's interesting rather than just going straight down. You've got some sort of movement to that shape. I'd like that. I think that's nice. All right, now we'll just do the same idea over here, except I will darken that just a little for the sake of, because I think this is a little bigger tree. We'll have a bigger trunk. It may even come, come down over here somewhere. So now I'm going to work in some water here. This is my color, just a purpley blue, some white. That'll work. Doesn't need to be anything too fancy, that's for sure. Maybe a little darker here at the foreground. Just This is just a basic underpainting, you know. Just get it in, get it covered, so we can put stuff on top of this. There we go. A little darker here so we have some more contrast. That'll totally work. I like that. It's going to be a nice little painting. This is a 14 by 18 size. I don't think I mentioned that. And I've got it vertically. So I think, it, it, like I said, it'd be a nice little, nice little painting. I've got a very small section of grass back here. I'm going to go ahead and 
get that painted in. I'm trying to do everything that I want done here again before the bridge goes in, just to make life a little easier for me. Quick and easy. That's all it is. If people look to that first, I, I think we, we did something terribly wrong. <laughs> in fact, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tone that back just a little with some of this bluish color. It represents kind of some colors going on in the background to help tie them together. We've got so many details to paint. I don't really want to spend too much time here. I'm, I'm not rushing, but I'm moving with speed <laughs> through some of this underpainting that's just you're going to be covered up a lot. Uh, There's just some basic, quick, no big deal rocks here. You know, again, just I'm, I'm not worried about them. Just not worried about them. And I'm going to begin underpainting, not really perfectly, just just basic uh, directions mostly. You know, that is the direction of the strokes needs to be correct. I'm not really worried about painting in each step. I'll pick them out with highlights and shadows later. I just need to get the directions correct, which is, you know, so don't be painting like this if you know your steps are going like this. I'm going to put on just a, a brief, quick coat of paint on here, of highlights, sort of, you know, we will need to do this in a couple of stages. This is my color, sort of just a kind of a muddy color. In fact, every time you reload it, this good is a little different there. It would not be a bad thing to change colors just slightly, although it is supposed to be a highlight, so at least get it bright. You know, we haven't really talked about our lighting, but it's actually coming kind of across like this today. Highlight's gonna be on the rocks here, you know, uh, and then highlight on this here, and then highlight here, shadow here. So actually most of this is gonna be in shadow. Let's brighten that up. This is definitely gonna benefit from being a little brighter. It doesn't have to be perfect. If you've ever done one of those Italian style paintings with me, this is basically identical to the way that I would do that. Which is first just model down colors and then you can kind of go back out and pick out your details. But I, I like the idea of having these colors in here. So now I'm gonna work on these steps. And uh, I'm just focusing mainly here on the highlight section of each step. The good news is these are old, rough steps and they probably weren't put in real well to begin with. So uh, some amount of variation is desirable in these. Now, if you were to do uh, some sort of a city scene and you know, something modern, you would need to get these like better. But because this is so rural and rustic, just, just as it is, I don't, uh, I don't see any reason to stress out about it. This is like when you go to paint a barn, Oh boy, I don't know about you, but I paint old barns <laughs> for this reason. Now I've got some sort of a landing or like where the stairs change uh, planned out. At least it was planned out in the, uh, in the sketch that I did. Let me see. So if I did that there and then they kind of turn, you'll have to excuse my kind of winging it as I go, but sometimes you gotta do that. <laughs> so. If it doesn't sound like I know what I'm doing, well, that's okay. Now I've thinned my paint down quite a bit. Actually, what I did was I just used my Mr. Bottle to squirt a bunch of water there. And I've got a liner brush consistency. And that's important because when I touch it, I want it to just fade right away. See that? So you get my soft edges. Just oh, like that. You only get about a second or two to, to touch it and blend it in, but it's well worth it. See that? Okay, working at just getting, you can have some round, they don't have to all be like perfect squares. In fact, I'd say they shouldn't be, you know. Just getting these cracks and, and stuff going on here in this, in this bridge. Very loose, free and random, no big deal. So then, now I'm gonna begin to float just a little bit of highlight water across. That'll work, that'll work. Just, we don't need a whole lot. Just enough to show, hey, there's something going on. Okay. Not too much under there because I like to see a little bridge shadow there. We can always bring that bridge shadow back. This is one thing that I think is probably easier in acrylic than it is in oil. Just right here, there's this little part right here because I can go over my dark rocks without mixing mud. There you go. Maybe it hits this rock and splashes again. I don't know. You know, just anything like that. 
nothing too nothing too symmetrical so whatever i do i kind of want it that to be somewhat irregular and nothing too crazy <laughs> we're not trying to paint some raging river here this is just a just a little drop it's nice I, I think that's probably reasonable enough you know again not overdone now we'll just get a couple tree trunks in here nothing too crazy today fairly straightforward see that good 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 yeah, and then we'll put our highlights and stuff over these so they don't have to be anywhere near perfect. Good, because they're not. <laughs> uh, yes, and right over here, maybe another one. See, this one will be behind that. Maybe a little light to soften that, but behind that tree clump. And then this one here, like a little bush. Just bring out some stuff. Again, a lot of that will be covered, but at least it's we got some, some sort of a structure, you know, going on in here. Now I'm going to just very briefly put in a couple of rock highlights. My rocks are not the main thing. In fact, that's a little too bright even. I'm going to just darken that color up some, some mud, whatever that is there. Good. Just a little color on these rocks. And I ended up just pushing in a little bit of foliage here to cover up some of the rocks that I had there. You just don't need a lot. It's mostly a uh, garden, it's mostly flowers and whatnot. Now I'm finally getting around to sculpting some of these larger bushes and so on in the foreground. Just like this, a lot of tapping of various green tones. You know, some golds and yellow ochres and whatever you can toss in there. Also, fan brush is probably going to be your best bet for this sort of thing. You could use, you know, you could use a little number four bristle brush, but the fan brush is going to give you much larger leaves, much, much larger leaves. And I think that's going to work out better in the long run for a lot of this stuff, because I want this to look kind of, you know, close up. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. And I can do I can do more as I go. I'm not locked into just this exclusively. I can do more as I go. But I'm just getting my I'm getting my basic bush shapes kind of started. In fact, it wouldn't hurt to even change. Well, this brush is okay. I was gonna say if I wasn't doing all the flowers, I would probably change to the number four flat brush, but because I am doing flowers, I can just get away with this. I don't really need to see proper structure or anything in the and the little bushes and shrubs, that's going to be more than sufficient. You see how that's more muddled together, a little softer? See that? Big difference. To me, it's a big difference. So you get that nice kind of soft and it goes to sharp down here. And that creates some amount of depth even in this. And we'll do our best to keep that intact throughout the painting and not lose that effect. That's easier said than done. You know, you get in there, oh, I'm having a good time of painting quick. I'm getting all this, and then all of a sudden you've overdone it. So watch out for that. Let me go ahead and add just a final highlight here on my yellow greens, and then we'll change to flowers and really get something going. Well, now it's time to add flowers here to these bushes, and I won't overdo it. See, I'll just touch on these flowers. And I, my color is just this well, very loose mix kind of here, this rose color. Very loose, a lot of... Uh, See that? a lot of variations, some globby whites and so on and so on and so on. <laughs> yeah, that works. And see that? I'm just touching down and creating these little flowers. There's nothing really to it. I'm not going and trying to paint too much of an individual flower, although it wouldn't hurt to have individual um, sort of shapes going on here in the foreground. You know, it wouldn't hurt to, in other words, it wouldn't hurt to give it a little swoosh or swirl. See that? Just. Uh, you know, kind of indicate a flower, so it's not just um, a blob, I guess. I don't know, it's still kind of just a blob, but it doesn't really matter. See that? But a series of shapes, kind of groupings there, you know, and then it'll be more like tree leaves once you go back, and then you're basically just doing the comma strokes that we all love and know, <laughs> and know and love, you know what I mean. There it is. And maybe some darker red. Well, I don't know. You play with this, you know, as much or as little as you would like for your particular painting. I don't know. I know it's kind of like I was calling this a garden painting, especially as I was like coming up with the with the idea for it. But it's I don't know. It's more like a, it's more like a bridge painting with stuff around it. I guess that is okay. If your painting doesn't change halfway through, well, you haven't been painting very long, right? 
if you don't have a painting that changes halfway through every once in a while. Now I'm gonna bring in just a few branches here to finish up this painting. You can see just a lot of repetitive work, you know, nothing crazy, just repetitive, nothing out of the norm. But sometimes you gotta just do, do the repetitive stuff just for a minute or two, you know, get you a, a cup of coffee or something and, and just get through it. And then you got a nice, beautiful result. It's well worth it. But now I've got my liner brush. I've got my liner brush out and we're just gonna add in these final branches. Don't want to have it too thin or else it'll run down the painting. Of course, you go the other direction and you have it too thick and it won't go anywhere at all. But that works right there. I like some of that contrast in it as I run out of paint, even wipe some of that out of the brush. I'll then I can use that just the fine point of the brush to pull some of these little branches out. I think that's enough. I don't want to make it too busy, but I, I like that interest. I think because there's so much foliage, I think just having a little bit of that dead tree sticking out, it just adds oh, a little bit of rugged. This is almost looking a little too perfect. You know what I mean? You, you know, it's looking a little too perfect. That, that to me breaks up some of that perfection and makes it more rugged. And I, I like that a little better. There you go. And we'll definitely do some sticks and stuff right up in here. That'll work too. Good contrast. Anywhere there's a light, you can pop a dark, you know? Just as easy as that. These little grass things that I did down there, you know? Just whatever, go around and do as much of this as you need to. Well, that about wraps up our painting for today. Hopefully this inspires you to do something a little bit different. Maybe give this one a try and share it with me. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and brush line. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.